So you'll want to build a bus conversion. First thing you need to do is decide what type of vehicle you're actually going to buy. Are you going to buy a school bus? Are you going to buy a short bus, a long bus, a coach? There are a lot of decisions to make. And in this series of videos, we're going to be going through all the questions you might have about building a bus. So first thing, what vehicle do I need? Am I going to do a van? Am I going to do a short bus, a long bus, front engine, rear engine, or a coach? There are a lot of variables to answer. And it really depends on what's best for you. So first of all, size matters. Do you really need all this space? If you don't, then you might not need a coach. Do you really need to house 10 people? If you're just alone, a van might do the thing for you. So you need to consider what you're going to be doing with the vehicle before choosing the vehicle. Is it a weekend getaway? Are you trying to be stealth in a city? Or are you going to go on the vast expanses of our highways and stop at RV parks? These are all questions you need to ask yourself before even thinking about what vehicle you need. Now, in terms of the vehicles you need, there are a lot of different considerations other than what am I going to do with it, but where do you live? Are you going to be doing the chasing the 70 degree thing? If you are, good for you. If not, if you're stuck like us, we're in Quebec right now. It's minus 20 outside. It's not exactly warm, but inside the bus, it's nice and warm because we properly insulated it and properly heated it. Now, if you're trying to do this in a small van, it's a little more difficult. If you're trying to do it in a large school bus or a large coach, it's actually a little easier because you have more room for insulation. The other aspect you need to consider is where are you going to be traveling and how do you really think you're going to use the bus? Are you going to be on BLM land boondocking and not a care in the world? Or are you the type that likes to go to an RV park, plug in and not have to worry? These are all, again, decisions you need to make. Now, let's take a look at the individual vehicles. Vans, so sprinters, ram vans, uh, transits, etc., etc., are great vehicles to convert. They're comfortable, they're easy to maintain, they're easy to get. Uh, you can buy new ones too. And the fun thing about a van is you can park it just about anywhere. And they're accepted just about anywhere as well. Next is the short bus. Now, the short bus, despite what we were told in school, is a good thing. Uh, the short bus is something that allows you a little more space than a van, but you can still park it just about anywhere. And it allows you a little more space than a van because they're generally wider and sometimes a little taller. And you can maybe get some with a wheelchair door. And the wheelchair door and the accompanying lift makes for a lot of different possibilities. And they're inexpensive. Next is your front engine school bus. Now the front engine school bus can be all sorts of different lengths. Uh, you can get up to a 72 passenger bus that's about 40 foot long. And the front engine bus has some advantages, but also has a few disadvantages. The advantages, well, you have space. They're inexpensive, they're really cool, and they're easy to drive, just like the van and the minivan. The disadvantage of a front engine school bus is they're generally slow. They're not necessarily meant for highway use. They're loud. No matter what you do, they're loud. So as you're driving them, they're loud. Uh, you can turn the tunes up, but if you're trying to converse with your family, no, probably not going to happen. The other thing that's good about a front engine school bus is repairability, is safety. You know, any school bus, safety, <laughs> it's a major consideration. The other uh, aspect of it, though, that you have to look at when you're considering a school bus is, first of all, a lot of our V parks, your persona non grata, they don't necessarily enjoy having school buses. Even though most school buses are built better than RVs, they have a stigma to them. Partridge family, we can blame them. The other aspect of a school bus is they rust. And that rust is a big consideration. Depending on where you are, though. If you bought your bus in Arizona, well, you probably have never seen rust in your life. So that's a good thing. But if you're buying it in the Northeast, yeah, there's a good chance you're going to be playing in rust. And you're going to be welding and you're going to be cutting and you're going to be grinding. That's the thing you like to do. Great. 
The other part of a school bus is the ride. They're built on medium duty truck chassis, like a dump truck almost. So they're not exactly the smoothest ride on the road. Remember the last time you rode in a school bus? Did you say, wow, this is a comfortable ride? Probably not. The other consideration with a school bus is they're very much a taxed vehicle. Now I'm not talking income tax, I'm not talking money. I'm talking it's at the limit of what the engine and transmission can do when it's a school bus because they're meant for short rides. They're not going 500 miles a day. They're not going fast, it's stop and go. So you've got a lot of wear on them. But the other thing is, the engines in them are at their maximum. And when you're trying to cruise on the highway at 65, 70, 75 miles an hour in a school bus, not exactly an easy situation. Because if you consider it this way, in most school buses, the engine that's in it is the same engine that you can find in a one-ton pickup truck. So a one-ton pickup truck, that's a very powerful engine. The school bus, it becomes a little on the limit. And maintenance in a school bus is actually not that expensive. It's not going to be any cheaper than a coach. It's not going to be much more than a van. So maintenance-wise, across all of them, it depends on what you're doing with it. And the larger the vehicle, the larger the tools you'll need. But they're actually very simple vehicles to work on and you can learn how to work on it yourself. The consideration is safety once again, so you need to have the proper tools and the proper supports to hold the vehicle up if you're taking a tire off of it, but you can do it. It can be done. The final option is the coach. That's what we're in here. And we chose a coach for many reasons. First of all is the storage. Now with school bus, if you want underbelly storage, if you bought one with underbelly storage, you're lucky. If not, you have to build underbelly storage. And it's not a hard thing to do, but it's more time, it's more money, and it's more effort. The other consideration is with a school bus, you've got a frame running from front to back. In a coach, they're a monocoque construction. There's no frame. So the bays that are underneath are side to side. They're full width, they're full height. That gives you a lot of opportunities to put things like tanks and storage and space and barbecues and bicycles and all that fun stuff. The other consideration with a coach is that the engines are rather relaxed in these things. So we'll take this bus for example. It's a Detroit Diesel Series 60 12.7 liter engine. It's the same engine that a lot of tractor trailers use. They're pulling around 80,000, 100,000 pounds. We're pulling around 35 to 40,000 pounds. So the engine is really not working hard at all. This bus can easily cruise at 75 miles an hour all day long and not miss a beat and do it quietly and comfortably because of the air ride suspension. Now, a lot of people are afraid of, it's gonna be expensive to maintain. Actually, it's the opposite. But once again, it comes down to how you're using the bus. If you're the type that goes away for a weekend, drives 50 miles to the closest park, parks it and it stays there, a coach, probably isn't for you. But if you're like us and you drive 40, 50,000 miles a year, then a coach probably is for you. The worst thing you can do to a bus is park it. They're meant to be moving. Now a school bus is meant to move in short bursts, little trips. A coach like this is meant to cross the country again and again and again. As far as fuel economy goes, all in the same boat, six to 10 miles per gallon. If someone is selling you a coach and says it gets 10 miles per gallon, get them to give you a written guarantee. It's very rare that that happens. Now, the one we skipped over was the rear engine school bus. Now the rear engine school bus is kind of a hybrid. You've got the rear engine. Normally it's about the same engine that you find in a front engine bus, but it gives you a lot more space because you don't have that dog nose to waste space in the bus. And it quiets things down because the engine is 40 feet behind you. It's not making that much noise up front. The disadvantage, again, compared to a coach, now comes into power and suspension. And a lot of the front engine buses have underbelly storage. So that underbelly storage is a great thing, but that underbelly storage isn't as big as the one in a coach. I have a friend who's actually putting in the basement of his coach without any modification whatsoever, a Riker from 
uh, Bombardier. So a uh, Can-Am Riker, sorry, French thing. Uh, so a Can-Am Riker will actually fit in the bay of his bus without any modification to the bus or the Riker. Just needs a pair of ramps. Try doing that in a school bus. Try doing that in a van. Not going to happen. If you're living in your bus full time, that under bay storage is great. If you're a weekender going to, uh, you know, doing the tailgate thing, you don't need that. So there are a lot of things to consider. And when you take everything into consideration, price becomes actually less of a factor. Now, if we look at size, the van is probably the most expensive of the bunch because uh, you're buying a newer vehicle. They're not cheap, and they're really in demand right now. Then you look at the school bus. They're very inexpensive to purchase, but you've got a lot of work ahead of you, and that work can be daunting for many. The other option, the coach, well, the coach, prices have come down a lot uh, because of what's happened with COVID, things like that. The market has dropped considerably. So you can buy a 10-year-old coach for the price you would have paid a 30-year-old coach before. And that's another thing. School buses are designed for a life cycle of about 10 years. Coaches are designed for a life cycle of 30 years. Big difference there. Coaches are generally made out of aluminum and stainless steel, whereas school buses, good old-fashioned, cold-rolled steel. And that's not a bad thing, and it's not necessarily a good thing either. Depends, again, where you are. Once rust sets in, you have to cut it out. You can't just patch over rust. If you patch over rust, you're going to be patching over it again and again and again and again. So any bus that you choose, you're going to learn new skills like cutting metal and welding. Even in this one, we had a bit of rust in the back so that we needed to take care of. We took care of it, not a big deal. So when you're considering a bus, look at all your options and don't only consider a bus. Now, the one thing I completely didn't talk about is buying an RV. The reason RVs... They're not in the same league as a bus. They're not in the same league as a van. Now, you can buy right now, because they're very popular, you can go to an RV dealership and buy a Class B, which is basically they've taken a Sprinter van and done it up as an RV. And they've been around for a long time, but now they're gaining in popularity. So if you're not a hands-on type and you like the design that you can buy, great. As far as a Class A RV, so a Class A RV is generally as big as this, uh, they range anywhere from 28 feet to 45 feet. They're okay. But again, if you look at how they're built, they're not going to last as long as a bus. And a bus, you can make it what you want it to be. You don't have to go with a cookie cutter design. If you like purple and gold, you can make it purple and gold inside and out. If you like orange, it can be orange. If you like wood, you can do it in wood. If you like steel, you can do it in steel. Whatever you want, whatever you fancy, it's yours. Because basically, you're building a house on wheels. If you have any questions, comments, thoughts, or ideas, leave them below. We'll be uh, expanding on this series as time goes on. Basically, bus building FAQs. Thanks a lot.